Greetings everyone, uh, today I am going to be reviewing Within the Ring of Fire, the Book of True Names. I unfortunately do not have a physical copy of this book yet. However, I do have a great deal of experience with it. Um, I did the final round of proofreading on it, um, and I also, before it was released obviously, uh, and I have a PDF copy that I have used extensively in my games. Um, this, uh, for me, is, again, one of the best RPG products I've ever come across. It is right up there with 77 Thrones, though I think for myself, 77 Thrones has uh, still holding this spot that uh, nothing, nothing is able to dethrone, um, simply because that book, as a source for story information for me, uh, is just unmatched. Um, however, uh, a very, very close second is the Book of True Names. Um, like I said, all I did was proofread it, so please don't accuse me of, uh, you know, having some sort of nefarious uh, uh, intentions in making this review. Um, the book itself uh, is the best one in terms of its production quality in the entire Within the Ring of Fire line. Uh, the art is absolutely uh, it's, it's great. Uh, it is truly great. And the best thing about the art in this book is that it finally feels like there is a uh, coherent uh, style to all of it. Um, there's still a couple of pieces that look a little odd. They don't really fit with the rest of them. Uh, but this is by far the strongest book that has been released by Raw Immersive Games in terms of uh, its, uh, its production quality. Um, but what is this book? Uh, a lot of people <laughs> have been waiting for magic for a long time to be released, the rules uh, and the story behind magic for Within the Ring of Fire, and this absolutely delivers. Uh, there are five different esoteric paths of the Magi. Uh, each one uh, was created by the trolls uh, for a specific purpose, um, and there is a just... A, an incredible amount of inspiration for different types of characters, villains, um, and and other non-player characters, uh, and just for world events in your game. Um, most some of the paths have multiple tracks within them for for what they can do. Uh, necromancy is one. It has uh, both uh, kind of holy necromancy and malfeasant necromancy. And what malfeasance is, is when somebody takes uh, this magical power, which is really the religion of the trolls, these incredibly powerful spiritual entities uh, that are not the descendants of gods. Uh, they are uh, what some would say the true, true uh, benefactors and protectors of Kavega Thale. Uh, but necromancy, what, what, what happens is when people take this power and use it for nefarious purposes or kind of twist it and, uh, and alter it in some way, um, they are kind of by definition doing something evil with it, at least from the perspective of the trolls. So with holy necromancy, um, it's, it's a lot different than other games that I've seen. It's, uh, some of it has to do with preserving the spirits of the dead, uh, stopping them from entering this unnatural uh, cycle of reincarnation, and preserving their souls and their knowledge. Um, whereas Malfeasant Necromancy uh, is, a, is a little bit more akin to what you would see in a traditional RPG where people are, you know, raising kind of zombies and things like this and, and using it for these kind of selfish and evil purposes. Uh, it's really, really cool. Not every path uh, within the book has a, uh, a true malfeasant track to it, uh, but malfeasance is a trait that you can, uh, you can acquire just by misusing magic, by using it for purposes that are counter uh, to the, the kind of core principles of it. Uh, it's really, really cool, uh, and it, gaining malfeasance, I mean, it gives you power to an extent. Uh, because you can do these things that no one else can do, but at the same time, it creates enemies for you. Uh, the trolls can can smell and see the taint of malfeasance on others, so if you are ever to encounter any one of these great spiritual entities, uh, then you are in for some big, big trouble. 
Uh, each of these pads, uh, like I said, provides ample uh, inspiration for different characters. It's, it's amazing and it kind of, it really kind of fleshes out an area of the game that seemed to be lacking for a long time. But what this book really is uh, beyond that um, is a vast expansion of this world. Um, we've had, you know, 50 or 60 races, you know, at, at our fingertips for a long time, but now you've got something like 40 or 50 different spirits, uh, types of spirits, and inspiration for creating your own spirits. And these spirits are the servitors of the gods, of the trolls, uh, of the elder creators. They, uh, they are really, really fantastic. There are some truly scary ones in there. Uh, and it finally feels with this book that this world is complete. And I know uh, Ander has more, uh, a lot more content planned for this game. Uh, I think the next book, I'm not sure which one's actually coming out next, but he's been working for a long time on uh, Here Be Dragons, which will go on to uh, really expand on the different dra uh, types of dragons, uh, the different broods and whatnot, uh, which I am patiently waiting for. Uh, but you finally get lore on the trolls, the different types of trolls, uh, really what they're kind of, what they appear like, but what their, their power level is, uh, and how you can integrate them into your story. Uh, it goes over, you know, the lowest level spirits, things that are, you know, that could be just like an orb of light, uh, all the way through these vastly powerful spiritual entities known as the Jotun, or the Giants. And if you are uh, subscribed to my channel, right now we are playing uh, Within the Ring of Fire, Hell and Back Season 2, uh, and in that, the player characters are all, excuse me, <laughs> not player characters, the Catalysts are all playing Giants. Um, and each Giant shares an aspect of the Elder Creator uh, that, that that created it. They are the kind of they are the they report directly to the elder creators. Um, in some cases, there are many many of these giants, uh, and others like with uh, the servants of Morgul, the fire giants. There are only a thousand of them. That is a hard limit on the number that uh, of giants that it can ever ever be, um, and they can be killed, and they can uh, new giants can be can be created. Um, they are immensely powerful. Um, and what I think is kind of the most interesting about this book, besides providing just this incredible wealth of information and, and inspiration and really giving you, like when in 77 Thrones, when uh, the, under each, each god and elder creator's listing, it tells you what their servants are, it lists what they are, but we, we had no idea. It was a lot like reading Saga Book and uh, referencing, you know, things like Chathons and, and Nixads and all of these other uh, creations of Ander Wood. Um, and we didn't know what they were, uh, and that was kind of frustrating. It was much less frustrating in 77 Thrones because you didn't in my opinion, you didn't need to really know what their servants were. Uh, that book, what was important to me was the relationships between the gods. Um, in this one, you get everything. Uh, there is, I think, no stone that has been left unturned in this book, and um, it's, this is a book that since I've read it, I have used pretty much for every single session that I've, that I've had. Um, it also goes over the kind of creation and system for uh, magical items and magical potions and, uh, and and other things of that sort, magical armor. And it's a lot more interesting than in your standard fantasy game because these aren't just things that have been you know enchanted by magic or whatnot. Uh, it literally comes down to the idea that in order for a weapon to be considered magical or or you know spiritually empowered, enchanted. Uh, what it means is that a summoner, one of the, uh, you know, a follower of one of the five esoteric paths of the Magi, um, has either convinced a spirit of a various uh, level of power to inhabit an item uh, and, and kind of grant these extra abilities, uh, has either tricked one into being there or has forced one into being there. And each spirit level, there are, uh, there are kind of four levels, four tiers to the, the spirits. Uh, once you get to the fifth tier, now you're in the territory of gods and divinities. 
um, but each one, levels one through four, uh, the way that these items are presented, it is not a chapter on items. What it is, is each entry for each spirit will give you a listing of uh, ideas and inspiration for different things that a spirit bound to an item could do. Whether it's through uh, draughts or drafts, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, uh, like with many things and within the Ring of Fire, are these kind of uh, these these elixirs and potions that a spirit has been bound to, and those have their own effects. Uh, what type? What you know, imbuing this spirit into into armor would do for you, or into a weapon, uh, the kind of uh, bonuses and whatnot. But what is what is not important about this is the stats and what they can do for you. Those are cool and interesting, but what is truly interesting about this is that they have each item, whether it is a potion, armor, weapon, you know, a crown, a ring, uh, whatever, it is, a fork, you know, whatever it is, has a story. Every single one. Because magic is not something that is really commonplace. You don't just have summoners running around. There are no shops that are selling magic potions and all this shit. Uh, for, for a spirit to have been bound to an item, there is a specific story behind that. And it's your job as a player or as a flame tender to come up with that. And that's something that absolutely floors me about this game is that every single aspect has always been geared toward creating a cooler and better story. And on this count, uh, you know, the, the magic item system is just amazing. There's no such thing as a plus one sword. Uh, there's nothing like that. Uh, because the spirit is a living entity within that object. And if you abuse it, it can turn against you. Um, or it can aid you if, you know, if you, if you have good relations with it. But when you get to like the fourth tier of the, the spirit level, um, these are spirits that would never, ever have agreed to bind themselves into an earthly prison, um, a flesh prison, because spirit in the world of Kavegathael is what is most real. Flesh is this kind of abomination, this illusion, and uh, the path of summoning itself was uh, the last of the esoteric paths to be developed, and it was used specifically in the God's War to, uh, to control the spirits of the gods, to, uh, you know, as, as kind of like this, like, you know, mystical CIA type thing, you know, where they're, uh, they, can, they can alter what they're doing, they can bind them to these items and, and force them to do their bidding, turn them against the gods. It's, it's awesome, it's super rad. Um, uh, and like I said, it gives you ideas for stories, and it's just uh, it's it's nightmare fuel for <laughs> for your players, especially if they're playing spirits. Um, as my as my players found out in our first session. Um, additionally, there are uh, different types of magical items that would be that are called relics, and relics are not items that have spirits bound to them, but are items that have been uh, imbued with power from the gods or the elder creators, and these are truly, truly rare. Um, and they, they, the examples that they have are, are brilliant. They give you such, they have such cool backstories, and they do really, really incredible things. Um, and I think the best way to play with these things is also to, you know, if you have one of these things, the, the consequences of wielding it and of, and of even having it are going to be earth-shattering, um, uh, simply because there's going to be, whatever the story is behind it, simply possessing one of these things will create will create natural foes and enemies for you, people who want to destroy you, who want revenge, who want to destroy something they consider unholy. Um, it's really, really brilliant, uh, and I mean, every type of spirit you can imagine is represented in this book. Uh, the hierarchy of angels is in there, so you know who he who has many names his servants are, Pelgin servants, um, those who served her Mazda, and, and all of these different things. Uh, all of the spirits and you know that were created by like Mool and whatnot. You have uh, uh, different types of golems, which are basically these uh, these automata, or not even really automata, but these these 
earthly prisons that have spirits imbued into them or, or have a consciousness slightly awakened within them. Um, they're truly, truly terrifying. And this is also, it's, all of this is uh, nightmare fuel for your players, again, uh, because there is just an incredible array of new antagonists you can create with it. Um, and beyond that, uh, what's really interesting is that there are playable spirits, different types of spirits you can play. And the um, ones that are primarily listed are giants. Um, and each of the different types of giants is explicitly playable. I really think that you could take any spirit in this book almost um, and make a catalyst out of it uh, and, and have a blast. It would take some tweaking and some work with the flame tender to make it work, um, but it's uh, it's it's incredible. I mean, it says really that you know uh, giants are the only appropriate species to play, especially at that spirit level. Um, and there's some reason to go along with that, but there's also uh, the trolls, uh, the trolls which we've all been waiting for to learn more about are all here, each different type. And I understand why it's not recommended to play trolls because if you have you know the equivalent IQ of five thousand or something. Uh, you know something ridiculous, something that we <laughs> can't even possibly comprehend. It would be very difficult to role play an entity like that. Uh, but if you have strong players, I think you could make it work. Um, and uh, beyond the explicitly playable uh, species or uh, spirit types. There is also a wealth of advantages for scions, and scions are the product of sexual intercourse between uh, a spirit and one of the basic species, or even uh, advanced species, I guess. Um, and these advantages are pretty awesome. They right off right off the bat, you get some cool mechanical benefits. Uh, but what is more awesome than having a character that? In their lineage, they may have the blood of a giant or an oni or you know something something far more different and scary. Um, there's also listed here the uh, different spirits who serve Aramon, the uh, the demons, uh, these kind of giant viruses, living diseases um, that are truly horrific, <laughs> really truly horrific. Uh, the cover of the book. Um, it has a demon on the, on the front of it. Uh, it is it is really really cool. This is another book within this line that I think is a must have. Um, and I'm not sure whether this book is more for flame tenders or for players. Uh, yeah, every one of these books is really for both. Um, but this one I think straddles the line for uh, kind of a storyteller or flame tender resource and being a player resource. It really has that strength for both. Monsters and Men, also a huge resource for flame tenders, but really that's almost kind of like a player's handbook. At least that's the way Anders described it, and it, it provides so many opportunities to create new new and interesting characters. Um, it's a brilliant piece of work as well. I haven't reviewed that one. Um, but Book of True Names, like I said, by far is it's it's the best produced book in the Within the Ring of Fire line. Um, They've gotten better every single time, uh, and with the cohesive art style, uh, with the just in, just unbelievable amount of inspiration and uh, and and really tying this world together, uh, it's an incredible book, and it's it's definitely worth your time and money. Um, like I said, I've used it for almost every single session uh, that I've that I've played since I got my hands on that original Word document before it was released in PDF form. Um, and I will continue to use it. I will have to lean on it a lot now that my character, now that my players are, are playing um, spirits. They're playing giants, uh, which are immensely powerful, and coming up for, with challenges for them um, is, is going to be kind of difficult, I think. Uh, but it's, it's an amazing piece of work, and I definitely think you should take a look at it.